Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Between a Pot and a Hard Place. I'm Stephen Colton. And I'm Chris Kirkpatrick. And we have a special guest today. Uh, he's a, He's been a friend of mine on Facebook for quite some time. We kind of met through like the Kevin Smith world of communities on Facebook. He's written, directed, did, done his own projects, a lot of stuff out there. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Chris Pierre Domenico. We'll call him Crispy tonight. There we go. There we go. Hey, thanks, guys. That's what I've been called for 20 years, so happy to continue that. And uh, thank you guys for having me on your show. It's it's a real honor. Yeah. And um, I, I, hey, I'm following the son of Superman. That is a tough yeah. act to follow, but I will do my best. Yeah. That was a great interview last week. Um, I just heard it yesterday. Um, I had a long drive, and so... Uh, yeah, I thought that was great that you guys were able to get him. So well done. We really had a blast. Yeah. It, it had been one of those interviews that we had been working on setting up for a while, and all the all the dominoes just kind of fell at the right time. But yeah, just a lot of fun. Um, Jordan Elzas was uh, very transparent and open, and easily easy to question and talk to. So it just yeah, it was a great experience. Yeah, I I never thought of him as like such an easy person to talk to but he he was like yeah, so it came calm across, and, yeah yeah he was real chill like it, it felt very natural so yeah so that's great and, and i hope you guys continue to get big guests and you know especially you know related to uh geek and nerd culture the fandom everything so you know keep up the great work yeah well yeah. you know that was that was last week you're here with us this week um I, I will say, just kind of jumping right out there, I had an opportunity since you you watched our stuff. I did get a chance to go and watch uh, Jesus for Satan: Rise of the Zombies, <laughs> which uh, which I have to say is complete. It's just totally hilarious. Uh, really, really enjoyed it. Thank you. I really appreciate that, man. It's the craziest thing I ever did. Yeah. What? How, what? What kind of? I, I guess the right question would be, what made you think of uh, of that story? Well, I came up with the idea a couple of years ago. Um, I was really angry with kind of what was happening in the world and kind of just, just seeing what was happening, especially in the country. And um, that idea just came to me. Um, and I knew I wanted to make it by 2020. I knew it was a short film idea. I knew I had to make it by 2020. So um, my uh, screenwriting partner, who's my brother, uh, I pitched him the idea. We, we wrote a draft of it. Um, it was February 2020, and we had a, a table read. We were making changes, and we were getting ready to go. And the next month, the whole world shut down. And so I'm thinking, like, you know, we're not going to get to do this. I feel like if, if it goes past November 2020, it's not going to it's not gonna resonate. Um, like, that, it, we had to get it done before then. So I'm thinking, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And so I thought, oh, well, you know what? The characters in the movie have a pandemic, too, except their pandemic is zombies, and so that kind of allowed us to, right. <laughs> you know, right. uh, change the setup and kind of, you know, do even more satire than was originally planned because zombies weren't really a part of it, you know, at all from the beginning. So um, I was really pleased with how that turned out. It was it was really interesting in a way that it was it was a new way of filmmaking. You know, like none of mm. us uh, had we were learning how to create art in this unprecedented age. And I knew that even though like it wasn't exactly what I envisioned it was going to be like in my mind, I pictured it as a cross between dogma and parks and recreation, okay. um, you know, in even similar camera styles to like, kind of like the mockumentary type of look, even though I didn't get exactly that. I'm like, you know what? I want to have something. I got something to say. Mm -hmm. And here it is. And I was just really, really determined to do it. And I, I spent so many all nighters right here at my editing base, uh, just trying to get this thing done. Um, but it was worth it. I was really happy with how it turned out. And uh, people seemed to be uh, really entertained by it. In fact, like I was kind of upset I didn't piss off more people. <laughs> 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 you know, like I, right. I wanted it to be controversial, and and even even people that disagreed with me said, "Oh, that's that was really that was really good." I have um, there was a guy completely different uh, beliefs than I do um, that I showed the film to. Um, he's he's an old friend from college, and he said, "You know what? This this film really angered me in places, but this was so good. Here's 
here's a little bit of money. He gave me like 20 bucks. Like I, I, I like your stuff. I want to see you do more stuff. And that was radically cool. It was That's really, cool. really cool. That's to awesome. Have that. Yeah. That's really cool. I know we, we had talked about it briefly. Like we didn't really go into detail on it, but we, we, when we had Scott Schaffel on a while back, well, it was like a year ago. And uh, maybe, yeah, and was, he was really cool. Scott's, Scott's a great guy. Oh, I love Scott. He's a really good dude. Um, I, I met him interviewing him in Maryland at Wizard World Philly, I believe in 2010, 2010 okay. or 2011. Oh, wow. Um, and then, you know, I became friends with both of them and, uh, Scott, I got to work with first, I actually directed him in a movie back in 2012. So I, you know, he's a, he's an old friend and uh, just a delightful person, really good to the fans. And, um, yeah, anytime I, I get the chance to stop by and, uh, you know, the Northern Jersey area, you know, I see if he's around. So yeah, how did, I mean, how did that, how did that friendship develop? I mean, um, uh, was it just simply that he had acted in, in something you were doing or how did, how did that all get started? Um, you know, I guess with, so I, I had met him in Maryland through Facebook and then there was the convention. Um, and then Scott and I just kind of stayed in touch on social media. Like I, I, um, my brother and I, again, it was, we were writing a script and we thought, Oh, it would be great to get like a name in this. It would be great to right. have somebody, um, somebody that, you know, people know is like the lead and we thought Scott. And so I reached out to Scott and he's like, yeah, I would love to do this. Um, and he, had, yeah, it's funny. He actually crashed at my apartment for like three days. Oh, cool. <laughs> <That's> awesome. <laughs> which, which was a lot of fun. Like we, you know, we just, and I think that's really kind of where it came from. It's just, you know, you spend a lot of time with someone, uh, you know, talk about life and all sorts of things. Um, you know, you get close to them and, you know, he, he is one of the, uh, you know, biggest hearted people ever. You know, along with Marilyn too, they're both just mm-hmm. wonderful people. Yeah, we had her on too a while back. Of yeah, a that's right. I did, not... Yeah, I did listen to that one too. So that was really cool. That was the one we were uh, we were talking about earlier before coming on. It was like my internet went out during that interview, and I'm just sitting here like, no, 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 because I oh, thought, man, like, she was one of the first bigger guests. I mean, we had Mark Guggenheim on first. That was our first one. And that was a pretty big one to go go out on, like go in on whatever. And we had her on not too long after that because Scott came on and was like, we're still early on with guests. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, the, the show's over. Like it crashed. It's over. It kept going when I was off. So he, that worked out. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. No, your, your buddy here really kept it going. So it's, it's, <laughs> it's good. It's good. You have a team, right? Cause you just stuff happens sometimes. It really is. Yeah, I think that that's that really is kind of the the beauty of what Steven and I do is that, you know, if if he's busy doing something, I can jump in and and we we have each other's backs. But it was really one of those episodes where it was like, you know, what what's going to happen next, right? It is, right. you know, Murphy's Law of the difficult podcast interview. So. And that same show, I forgot to hit record, and it had been like 15 minutes. We were going like, <laughs> with n- not nobody's watching. It's not live. I'm just like, oh my gosh. But wow. I mean, it, it is what it is. It happens. But it, yeah, I we, I have made similar mistakes. I will continue to make those mistakes. I don't even mm-hmm. have the guts to go do live interviews yet, live podcasting. Like all my stuff is typically pre-recorded. So right. I give you guys props for doing a live. That's awesome. We, what we really like about live is the ability that we're able to have people that comment in the chat and then yeah. we're able to pop those up on the screen and have comments, you know, directly with people that are, that are watching the show. And I feel like that, that really is a lot of fun. Speaking of uh, Chris's brother, Corey actually says, does Chris have the movies hat? The internet wants to see him wear it. I guess he sees the, we're noticing oh, the movie man. shirt. I wish I, I did. I, how sweet! Do, how sweet do those new uh, Quick Stop shirts look? Oh, they I look mean, awesome! I'm like, I gotta get one. I gotta get one. I mean, I know they're gonna be on sale at some point. You, you just know, and like, you know, Kevin's really good at that. Like, let's make this thing in a movie. Now let's turn it around into a real life product. It started with Chulies, and then now, like, I want to get some Chulies gum. Like, yeah, man, so bad. You know, I am going up to the, they have a pop up movies up in Red Bank next mm-hmm. week. And so I'm going to try to get up there and maybe I can get a hat while I'm there. So, you know, give the people That'd what they cool. want. I kind of like I'm working at an airport now. So I'm like, we, we have flights going out to Newark a lot. And I'm like, let me just like sneak on this plane, get an Uber from Newark over to Jersey, 
or over to a, a Red Bank and then just go over there. But I mean, it would be like, I think it's like an hour and a half flight or hour 45 minutes. It's a really short flight. But then you'd have to be in Newark. Yeah. I mean, that's the closest you can fly into, I believe. Unless you go into the New York City, then you have to have that long drive back down to Jersey. So I don't right. know. And I would not want to pay for an Uber from New York City down to New Jersey. No. I mean, no. <laughs> it's, that's, that's too much. No, but I, definitely, I, yeah. I am jealous of you guys, though, that you are, you are that close. I mean, I'm over here in California. It'd be a little bit of a drive for me. Oh, I thought you guys were in the same state, so that's no. you guys made it seamless. That's cool. No, yeah, we've we've never we've never actually met in real right. life. Uh, you know, we've been we've been good friends for what nine years now. About that, yeah, yeah. Back nine when the years. show uh, Heroes Reborn was on the air, and we had actually met before that because we joined in on this uh, Heroes fan page after the show had gone off the air originally. And then Heroes Reborn came out, and we're like, oh, man, Heroes Reborn. And then once that ended, we're like, well, what do we talk about? Right. Because we had never mentioned Spider-Man, Superman, Batman, none of that stuff before, other than just Heroes. And then we had nothing to talk about, so that's kind of the seed to what this became, really. That's awesome. Yeah, a lot of of texting back and forth and uh, and just being – just kind of being friends that way. And you you just never know where where things are going to lead. I never would have thought – when we were doing all of that uh, back and forth conversation that it would become a podcast, but yeah, I'm so glad that it did. Yeah. I know you guys have great chemistry. I, I would not have known that you hadn't met in person. Cause I just, I just assumed that you guys were, were nearby. So that's, that's really cool. I mean, I remember, gosh, um, you guys were probably around for the early days of the internet, like the late nineties, early two thousands. Right. Yeah, um, I was, I was there where, you know, the only friends I had were my online friends. Yeah. You know, and it was like such a such a special connection. And so it's it's cool that even now, like it's just so common to just, you know, I, I have a ton of friends all over the world. Um, it's just really cool that the technology allows us to maintain these relationships. It certainly made the world a lot smaller. Yeah. Right? I think yeah. that's that that you know, gone are these where it's just people that are within your who you work with or who you live next to, right? Uh, and sometimes you even assume that people are are near you and they're like, you know, it's, it's, I'll, I'll type in good morning and somebody will be like, um, it's 4 PM here. <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah. It's just, it just kind of cool how that works. And I do that too. Still like there's that little bit of disconnect there with the time difference because we talk so much and, and texting and on Facebook messenger and these, these kinds of things where it's like, I'll watch Titans and because we talk about that show a lot and we love Titans. I'll watch Titans. Like, dude, what did you think of Titans? And it's like, I haven't watched it yet. It's like, I want to talk to you after me or whatever. No spoilers. Like, oh, yeah. Right. We won't yeah, we yeah. know it for you. I'm in the future. Like, all my friends that I know that I talk about stuff to are, like, not even here that much. Most of them are out west. There's a few on the east coast, but most are out west. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I forget. You didn't see it. Or, and it's really confusing, too, when you have one that's in Texas or something. Because they're in a completely different time zone, too. So it's like, how are we all in different times? Like, this is weird. Right. But right. Just, it works. It works. So I know that you've been like, involved in uh, in podcasting yourself, right? Like, have it, you've got your own show or you've got other shows you've done? Yeah. So I have the Dork Daily YouTube channel, and we do a couple yeah. different podcasts on there. Uh, my brother and I do podcasts called Philly Film Brothers, um, where we will – typically just discuss like the latest nerdy movie we just saw, whether it was streaming or if it was in the theater. Um, we expanded that. Um, sometimes we'll bring other friends in. So we call that dork squad. So we just okay. did that. Um, actually, it was right after we saw the suicide squad, we saw that with a couple of friends who right. decided to do, um, do, Oh, let's call it the dork squad. If there's more than us. Um, I do a power Rangers podcast uh, where I rewatch awesome. all the original power Rangers episodes with, um, actually my former roommate, uh, one of my best friends named, uh, his name is Gabe. And, uh, we just go through and just talk about a season, um, which was really cool. So we've talked about the first two seasons and we talked about the movie. Um, and then I have a fourth one <laughs> coming out, uh, this week, uh, called Dunkle Vision. So that is going to be, uh, hosted by, uh, Brian Dunkelman, who is one of the original hosts of American Idol. Um, I'm serving more in a producer type role. Like I, I do appear in the first episode. 
Um, but you know, it's, it's more, you know, he's, he's the, the face of the show, right? I mean, he, he mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, very gifted, uh, on screen talent. Um, and so he's kind of driving it. The first guest is actually Justin Guarini. So I don't know if okay. you guys watched American Idol back in 02. I was the biggest, I was the biggest, hugest, uh, American Idol fan. So I, I knew who both of them were when I'd seen some of your posts. Oh, great. Great. Yeah. Um, and both of them, great guys, really, really great guys. And, a really compelling conversation, like just, just really, um, I mean, hilarious and emotional and heartbreaking and just, just really, really good stuff. So, uh, we're hoping to, you know, the Dunkel vision Avenue of that is going to be more like seeking out creative people, um, that everybody knows about from, you know, that movie or that show, uh, from 10, 20 years ago. And let's, let's figure out like what drives your creativity. And so we talked a lot, uh, with Justin about that. That's kind of cool though. I, I, I forget that it's been that long since American Idol first. Yeah. On the screens. You're like 20. It's one of those really makes you feel old moments. I'm just like, Oh my God. Thank you. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> cause I do. I remember seeing some of the first ones and I'm just like, cause we, I thought I mentioned like how Smallville came out in 2001 and Jordan Nelson was like, dude, I love Smallville. And I'm like, you were like being born when that show came out. <laughs> right. And now you're playing Superman's son, which is kind of crazy. Right? Makes you feel like, I was like, dude, it's, I didn't realize it's how weird. young he was. He's, he's 20 years old. And I'm just like, dude, how? How are you this smart, this awesome, <laughs> and like this well rounded and, and keep it up? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and you need that. You, you need a good head on your shoulders to, you know, survive in the industry. And I, I was surprised when I heard he was 20. He seemed, you know, more mature than. I, I guess most 20 year olds I know. <laughs> so, yeah, right. Yeah, good for him. I Definitely more mature than me. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's crazy for me is that, you know, my daughter actually turns 20 uh, on the seventh of this month. Really? Oh my gosh. So the, so the idea that here we're interviewing this, this, uh, you know, 20 year old who's the same age as my daughter. Right. Um, it just, yeah. It's like interviewing your daughter's friend. Like, let me talk it to your is. friend on our podcast. Right. <laughs> Right, exactly. <laughs> so, how did you how did you arrange that thing with uh, with Brian Dunkelman? You, it was through Jesus v. Satan. Um, okay, so he had, he he's in played, it. Uh, yeah, he, play, he played himself guy. in it. Yeah, he. Um, the whole idea behind that is, I, I really wanted the news anchors in that movie to be reality TV stars. I just, I kind of wanted to do like a little meta commentary on media and just kind of with all the craziness happening at the time, like it'd be really funny if like these reality stars are just playing themselves as newscasters. Like that would right. just be cool. Mm -hmm. And I, I really wanted that. And Brian was the first one I got on. Um, I had been friends with him on Facebook for a number of years. Um, and so I just reached out to him on messenger. I'm like, Hey, I'm, you know, I've been a fan for a long time you know, thinking about doing this. So we, we did a phone call. He loved it. And he, you know, agreed to agree to do it. We had a great time. I actually sat here at my desk, uh, directing him in LA because we had, um, we had a two person crew in LA, um, where he was, you know, I'm in Maryland. And so I'm directing through zoom, you know, seeing the performance, hearing it and say, okay, you know, do this, change, change that, this and that. It was a blast. And Brian's another guy, you know, I, I never, if you would have told me like 20 years ago uh, that the guy that I watched on American Idol would wind up being like one of my closest friends one day, like I would just think that's crazy. But um, right. we just, you know, we found we had, you know, a lot in common and, you know, similar senses of humor. And um, I, you know, he, we, our ideas seem to gel well together. You know, he's the performer. I'm, I'm the guy behind the scenes. And so, uh, you know, we just found that we were able to, you know, kind of help each other with what we want to do creatively. And um, yeah, and he, he was really into this podcast idea and was really excited to talk to Justin, you know, again, after, after many, many years. And, uh, you know, we just think it's something that, that will be helpful for both of us. That's cool. Do you find that you like being behind the camera better than you do oh. being in front of it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, I'm not a person that, you know, there, there's some directors out there that like, you know, I have to write the movie, I have to direct the movie and I have to star in the movie. And I can't imagine, I mean, it's great. Like Clint Eastwood can pull that off, you know, amazingly. And there's some other folks that do that. Like even um, like Ben Affleck can do that. You know, that's awesome. Right. Uh, but that's never been me because I, 
it, it is difficult for me to, I'm not a performer. Like that's just not who I am. I can play myself, right? you know, but it's difficult to be thinking about everything going on in the frame while being in the frame. Like I like to kind of be outside the frame to just make sure everything is running smoothly. Right. It's, and you can't see it. Like you can't see where the frame is, you know, in your mind, like, okay, exactly. this is yeah. but you can't really see it. So I haven't really yeah. directed anything. I mean, I worked on some like school projects when I had some film classes, but I mean, I learned a lot doing that. So I learned how to write a script, but I mean, still, yeah, it, I, it would totally like be, be kind of like difficult to, I would imagine doing a whole feature like film. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like, no, I can see why Kevin like with clerks and stuff, why silent Bob is like, just stands there and then like every other scene he's like oh okay i can direct this one. it's brilliant it's it's brilliant yeah. he has no lines he has to remember which i think is <laughs> which is really smart I, I think that the challenge would be that you you would have so many plates that you have to yeah spinning, right and, and at some point you know multitasking just falls apart right you're either going to do really well in front of the screen or you're going to do really well behind trying to get everything to line up perfectly would be really hard so I, I definitely, you know, I, I understand that a lot. Absolutely. And I, I'm not someone that ever wanted to be the star. Like I, you know, I don't want to be, you know, in the credits in the beginning, you know, starring Chris Domenico. I'd rather it say, you know, written and directed by Chris Domenico or executive producer Chris Domenico. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's just so many talented actors out there and I'm, it's just something I've never wanted to do. I put myself, you know, in my stuff for fun, um, but not ever in a big role. So I, I've got to ask, you know, my, my youngest daughter is actually currently uh, just starting college to become a film editor. Uh, awesome. That's what she wants to do. That's what she wants to do with her life. Um, she's really good at it. She has a lot of fun with it. I think she has a lot of talent. Then again, I'm kind of biased. Um, of course. <laughs> but what what advice would you give her? Because she might be watching tonight. Um, what what advice might you give her to help her get her foot in the door when it comes to being in the industry? You know, I would. You said you're in California, so yeah. I mean, there's there's multiple projects going on. I think it's really important for someone that is getting a feel for the business to just volunteer, you know, on sets, you know, as a production assistant and just kind of get a feel for how, um, you know, how a set runs. And I think especially being wanting to be an editor, you know, you can actually see how they shoot the scenes. Um, I know when I, when I, I edit all my stuff pretty much. And when I'm directing a scene, I'm, I'm visually editing it in my head. I'm making sure right. like I get all the shots I need. Um, like I, I have that little, you know, Adobe Premiere timeline in my image in my brain, you know, as I'm doing it. So I don't, I don't have like a jump hut or something or something that's, that, that will screw the continuity up. And so I would say, you know, volunteer, there are a lot of opportunities to work on student films and there's, there's a lot of people that need editors. I mean, I think everybody tries to do editing themselves and, Sometimes that's successful. Other times you need someone to just focus on the editing. And I know there's a lot of people that would love to have someone to just deal with the editing so they don't have to. So, um, you know, I'd recommend any kind of local websites, reputable websites that, you know, have gigs posted. Uh, we have one here. Um, I'm near Philly. I'm about an hour from Philly called film.org. And there's a lot of opportunities uh, on there just for uh, locally for local filmmaking opportunities. I'm sure they have similar things in California. Yeah. Well, and we're only maybe 50 miles from LA. Oh yeah. No, there's well, so much that's, stuff. That's super close. Yeah. Well, thank you. I, I, I really want to just make sure that she's got a lot of opportunities to, to kind of grow and expand and all that. So yeah. Thank you for the, for the advice. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Best of luck to her. So Corey popped up again, says, I'm trying to get any credit on screen. Currently, my back and my hand has been in a TV show. That's I'm impressive. Curious. Yeah, I've heard of, I've heard that before, but I don't know if I remember or have heard what TV show your back and hand is in, Corey. So is it is it like, I don't know. My first thought was Boy Meets World. I don't know why. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm interested about that. Like maybe your foot can get in the door. Right. Wow. You, you know, be there are a lot of opportunities to be an extra. I was in mm -hmm. 
I was in, but I wasn't in. I was in Cree 2 because oh. um, they filmed it in, you know, Stallone is from Philly. So they filmed it. They have a movie studio in my hometown, Aston, Pennsylvania, and they filmed several of the fight scenes there. They had like the ring there uh, and they needed audience members. And so I just saw an opportunity, didn't get paid anything. But I'm mm-hmm. like, hey, here's an opportunity to actually see a real Hollywood set, like a big budget movie, um, go through a day of production or two days of production. So um, there's there's always opportunities to to be an extra for free, um, you know, depending on you know what what is being filmed in the area. Now I think with COVID, there's so many more regulations now. Um, yeah. You know, who knows how long that's going to go on for? But you know, look for opportunities and. You know, if you're if you're on the West Coast, like you already have way more opportunities, um, way more stuff going on than necessarily on the East Coast. While there's good opportunities here, too, there's just so much more going on in California. Yeah, I was wanting to I was very tempted to hop on again, hop on a plane to Newark while Clerks 3 was filming, because I was like, if I just show up and just. You know, walk in front of the camera and be like, "Hey, guys!" Like they probably throw me out. But if I was like, "Hey, can I just like stand there in the corner and like somebody can like throw a beer can at me or like any little thing? Like, let me just walk by. Let me grab a gallon of milk, anything." But you know, from what I understood, their their set was pretty pretty closed off as far as the COVID restrictions, and they, they got yeah. COVID tests like every two days and and all that. Yeah, I, it was tempting for me too to drive up there and just maybe drive by it. But I'm like, you know what? Like, I know how small that store is. I've been in that store a number of times, and it is it is tiny. It is a really tiny spot. So, um, you know, I'm like, you know, with everything going on, I'll I'll wait to be an extra in Mall Rats too. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that yeah. would be a good one. I want to be like one of the security guards or something in the background. Be, you want to be La- LaForce? Yeah, I'll be LaForce 2 or Junior. There you or go. Or, that way you don't have any lines. You're just like. Yeah, you just have to look, look stern. Out, and I, from what I hear, like, I don't want to like spoil the movie, but like Kevin has, has like, gone out publicly and talked about it. Ethan Suplee is going to be in it, and he's like totally ripped and jacked now. He, he's not the guy he used to be that couldn't see the, the illusion. Um, so apparently, he's going to be one of the security guys. Oh, and Mallrats too. I hadn't heard that. Yeah, I mean that was back a couple of years ago in the, the first version of Mallrats, and I think at that point it might have been a series because he went yeah. from having the film to having the Mall Mall Brats, the right. limited series on a, you know, either on Netflix or whatever, and then now it went back to a, a movie again, and then Clerks Three happened first. So uh, who's to say? But I know he had he had Ethan on his show uh, on one of the Smodcast. I think it was Smodcast, and they were talking about weight loss and health and everything, and they, they just came up in conversation. He's like, yeah, you're going to be on this. And I'm like, that'd be great. Is he going to be LaForge's son, or is he going to be – like, I want to see him come back as well in black again. The same character from Mallrats, but just really yeah. ripped. It's like, I'm going to see that sailboat. And just, I, I don't know. <laughs> I just want to see him, like, punch a sailboat or something. That would just be really great. I love Ethan Suplee. Like, that in his line, like, my favorite line in, in Mallrats is probably – everybody's favorite. It's like these little kids like, Oh look, it's a scooter. <laughs> you dumb bastard. It's a, it's a, whatever. I love that. And, and he says it with such confidence. Like he's just like, really, he's really one up this kid. And it's, it's such a great gag. Like it's so it simple, is. but it's perfect. It never gets old. And it's relatable too. Cause I could never see those magic eye pieces no. either like that I, I was never able to do it properly so i i always felt like i was being punked right whenever I, whenever I tried like everyone's like oh i see it i see it. i'm like i don't see it <laughs> like my eyes are literally watering and i can't see the picture so yeah oh gosh and then Corey says he's gonna stare at a magic eye poster yeah let's know how that goes <laughs> Corey is sort of our like off-camera andy richter he is nice. I mean that. He, he, yeah, it's like my childhood all over again. Now, Chris, is that Corey's your brother? He is my brother. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. So he knows all. You know, he uh, he definitely keeps me honest. <laughs> nice. Well, it's nice that he's here supporting you. My brother's not here to to uh, rip me in the comments. So right. Yeah. Well, he will. <laughs> he will. He will mock me in public. So uh, <laughs> I just. 
I'm just yeah. bracing for it. I'm just bracing for it. That was a good one a, a week or two ago, and he like we were. I forget what what happened, but I said something that made it sound like I was calling Chris older than he is, and then and then Corey popped up and said that he re, he read bedtime stories to Mark Guggenheim, and <laughs> I'm just like, dude, what? But it was quite, funny. I'm not quite that old. And then Corey has actually met Andy Richter. Okay, well, that's pretty oh cool. nice, nice, yeah. Well, that, one of the what are the one of the great things about living, uh, you know, that close to Hollywood and everything else is we've been. I've been to at least two recordings of, uh, of the Conan O'Brien show. Nice, awesome. So yeah, I, um, I got to go one time. I in 2015, uh, Ice Cube and his son were the guests. They were promoting um, Straight Outta Compton, and oh. Um, wow. So I got the that was really because uh, Conan is like one of my pop culture heroes. Yeah, you know, he's I amazing. Just, his, you know, I, I didn't get into him until the he got the Tonight Show when he got the Tonight Show and all that stuff happened. Yeah, and you know, I had been going through something of uh, you know, my own problems at the time, not you know, connected to show business, and just kind of how he handled everything and how he dealt with. Uh, the loss of that, um, I just, I know, I just really clicked with this humor, and it kind of like helped me cope with what I was going through. I don't know what it was. Like, it, I loved the fact that not that he, you know, the whole Tonight Show thing happened, but like before that, like when he was still on Late Night, and he had all the goofy characters, you know, the um, Triumph, the Insult Comic Dog, all these goofy characters, and then when he left uh, NBC he didn't have all that. I was like, this isn't going to be the same, but it was actually better in a way. I think it was, it was really him being funny on his own without, I mean, they still did bits and everything, obviously, but it was a different show completely. And I, I liked that. Yeah. His, um, his remotes, I don't think any other late night host did the type of remotes that he does. Like, so funny. I like when he goes to the American girl store, Right, <laughs> <laughs> you know, or he goes uh, anytime he goes to like you know Italy, um, you know, especially with Jordan, oh uh, just comedic gold, comedic gold, and it it just feels so genuine. Like it doesn't feel like he's trying that hard. Yeah, the the without borders, like I love that. I watched that. I think it was on Netflix or something at one point. It was amazing when he goes down to. Um, where was it he went? It was one of the towns or countries. Well, I said towns, but one of the countries like where they're trying to cross the street and then like there's all this traffic. It's like eight lanes of traffic. And he's just like, oh, my God, we have to cross that. And everybody's like, shut up. And they just go across it like it's nothing. He's like, what? Oh, my God. He's like so amazed. His I don't know. His reactions to a lot of stuff is what really gets me a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Now he, he plays that role great. And and also his like the Clueless Gamer series of videos. Yeah, yeah, those are hilarious. They are. Oh my gosh, so hilarious! It's like, it's like oh, I wish I thought of that. That's a great idea. <laughs> right, right, right. Like let's get some guy that doesn't play comics, or doesn't play comics. What did I just say? Wow, I'm thinking of like so many different things all at once. You, you know what? I knew what you meant, pal. <laughs> yeah, I, I knew what I meant too, and I was like, wait a minute, what? Yeah. I play at, least, at least that telepathy is working. Yeah, because Corey is like telepathic. So right. anyone, anytime anyone's around him, like there's that psychic connection kind right. of thing. Right. <laughs> so I feel like you, you're you involved in all of these different projects. I, I wonder, how do you have time for your day job? Because I mean, I know that you're, <laughs> I know that you're, that you're a teacher, that you do, um, uh, you know, that you do uh, journalism, that you are involved in, um, what are what are the classes you're teaching right now? I teach TV and video production one, two, three, and four, and journalism. Okay. Uh, so it's in total it's six classes per semester. Um, sometimes six per day, sometimes uh, three per day. They they'll you know have extended periods for that block periods. How do I do it? That's a great question. I'm not sure. <laughs> You know, I think it used to be harder. Like when I was starting out, um, this is my ninth year of teaching. Right. So um, when I started teaching, I wasn't doing a lot of this stuff. Like, you know, I had the YouTube channel, but it kind of sat uh, really empty for, for a while. So I think like when I found my groove, like maybe around year three or year four, that's that was when I'm like, you know, I really want to start 
doing more projects again. And, you know, I, I think I just had found better ways to manage my time, um, you know, and kind of getting my work done during the school day um, so that I had nights and weekends and, you know, summer to, to work on projects. So, you know, it hasn't always been easy, but um, what I love about it is that I, I get to be like, I'm not, I'm not doing a traditional class. I'm, I'm doing a project class with kids that were exactly like I was in high school. Right. You know, I took, I took a version of my class at my high school, different high school. And I'm like, well, this is what I want to do. And so I think being around that creativity all the time and getting to work with kids and bounce creative ideas uh, back and forth and kind of help them with their projects and see what they come up with, which is some really brilliant stuff. You know, I, I think it kind of keeps me going. I, I think it's helpful that I teach what I do. You know, I'm a content creator and I teach content creation. So it, it doesn't feel like it's that separate. It kind of feels like it's, I just work in media, you know? Right. And that makes a lot of sense, actually. That's, and that's what got me involved in wanting to write. Like I was always thinking about like, oh, I want to do something. When I was a kid, I was like, I want to be on TV or whatever. And I wanted to be on Saved by the Bell when I was a kid. Um, <laughs> and I realized that's not going to happen. Um, and then I, I had some classes. Like I got into a digital media program for graphic design, realized graphic design wasn't what I wanted to do, even though that's what drew me in. I quickly learned that through like one class, like a film and video production class that I wanted to write. And that's, you know, where I learned how to do it and learn to edit a little bit. And I love editing. So if I ever, like, I don't want to say if, but whenever I shoot the first film, I want to edit and, you know, obviously have written it and want to edit it myself. Like everybody else can do everything else. Like if you want, if I want to get a director, fine. I'll like co-direct or something, but like, I'm not going to be in it. A lot of people have suggested though. It's like, you know, this character, because it's based on you, so you're the perfect person to play this character. I'm like, no, no, I'm I'm really not. Like, I'm not that confident to be like. It kind of like you know, if I were to put myself, it'd be like the goofy little fun side things where like, you know, whatever little embarrassing moment happens or some little gag, but I couldn't do a full movie, not. But like writing is really what I love. I, I want to create, not you know, not be involved in like being part of it. Sure, sure. And by the way, I did. I didn't finish reading your new draft yet, but I started to. And I already love. Um, it, it's hard to remember what it was before, but I do feel like it's flowing better than it was before. So yeah, you know, well done. You know, on the next draft, Thanks. and yeah, we'll, we'll have that finished soon. Yeah, I'm trying not to. I'm trying to hold off from starting the third draft because I'm just like, oh man, I don't want to like change too many little things. Because um, actually, there were some notes. And we never got to connect and have a discussion about it. But I actually sent the first draft to a lot of people. We I sent it to uh, Jay and Todd, who uh, made Northwood Pie. And I also sent it to – I think I think I sent you the full first draft. I'm not sure if you – Yeah, I, I, think, you the full first draft. I think I did. I think I read the okay. uh, an earlier yeah, yeah. version of this. Yeah. And there's so many people. And then I also sent it to Nick Fillinger, who was also you know, you know from uh, Jay and Son and Bob Strike Back. Strike Back. He yeah, almost and, re and reboot. Yeah. Yeah. And reboot, yeah. Yeah. Um, he read the first draft. He's like, dude, I got this really great idea with the ex-girlfriend and all this. Stuff. And I was like, yeah, we're going to talk about it. And then we didn't get a chance to talk about it. And I completely almost, almost took that character completely out of the thing. <laughs> and so like, I don't even know what his idea was. I was like, let me run, run through this. I didn't see, but I mean, he's like, dude, it's okay. And I'm just like, oh man, I really let him down by, he must've really liked this character. And I just, oh, now he's going to hold me up against the wall and try to beat me up. And, <laughs> and I, uh, been trying to get him and Jake on the podcast for a while too. Um, yeah, oh, that'd be uh, great. They're such a, a great duo, you know. Um, that's that whole opening scene of Strike Back just is so great at just setting the tone for like this is just going to be such a ridiculous movie set in this right. in the Clerks universe, which is just really really cool. Like it just all I don't know. Like I, I I would say like Strike Back is in my opinion I think it's the funniest Kevin Smith film. Yeah, overall comedy, I believe so. Because like yeah. Clerks Two is probably Clerks Two is probably my favorite, like to date so far. And then Reboot yeah. would be really close to that. But Clerks Two had a lot of like heart in it and a lot yeah, of like, yeah, really yeah. Good movie. But yeah, I, I would say for comedy's sake, I mean, even even Reboot had 
a ton of heart. It was like the only movie I watched a Kevin Smith film, a USQ film, and thought like, oh my gosh, I'm not crying. <laughs> you know, and like the Jay and Silent Bob movie. What are, what are you doing? <laughs> reboot Reboot did a really great job of combining like just the the ridiculous cartoon nature of Strike Back with the heart of like chasing Amy. Um, you know, I I love that scene that is sort of the epilogue to chasing Amy. And I you know as a fan, oh. waiting that many years, and and um, that's one of my favorite movies he's done. And I remember in, in Chasing Amy when Holden is talking to Jane Silent Bob and he's saying, you know, I'm, I'm crazy about this girl. You know, I see a future with her. I see kids with her. And you find out later, like, he does have a kid with her. It's not exactly how he thought it was going to be. But I just thought that was a really cool payoff for the fans. You know, it was a really mm -hmm. great callback to that moment. And then knowing a little bit of the backstory, it makes you really appreciate that scene that much more. Yeah. Because it yeah. almost didn't happen at all so and it's, that's awesome. and it almost feels like it would that movie i don't think i would have loved that movie as much i mean i would have loved the movie but it just that made it so much more perfect you know having that scene and you know having that uh the the, the final return of these characters from oh my gosh like what 18 years whatever it was yeah i mean and oddly and i know it's not too odd but like the biggest little payoff of like a joke for me in the whole movie as far as like a single joke was at the very end like the opening <laughs> or the ending credit scene spoilers everybody um go watch the silent bob reboot really quick but um yeah it's like see that guy over there for 25 years man <laughs> silent bob been here and doing gum in the locks and i lost i stood up and I oh yeah yeah, yeah 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 like i think i for, did too <laughs> i mean for years i thought it was scott shoutless character because it's like it made sense because it's like gum gum buy his gum gum is in the locks and then scott's point was like dude it couldn't have been him because if he really wanted to stick it to the store he would have just glued the main shutter shut like with right. the gum he wouldn't even let the door be open at all but I, to find I out love, that it was Dan bob like oh my gosh i love that scott has thought about it that much <laughs> right i think so many people come to him like scott did you do it did you do it did you do it it's, like, dude, it's been like 20 years i'm not really that guy but no i didn't yeah, yeah, and then that that whole that was gold. I I lost it too. I thought that was just such a hilarious ending, perfect. Because you almost forget about the gum in, in a way, like you know it's yeah. there, but then it's like, oh yeah, and like the whole point of the first movie, not the whole point, but like it kind of set the tone for the entire movie. The the inciting incident, in a way. It yeah, I think it's. I think we 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 learned from uh, Scott Schiaffo's character that there really are no such thing as small parts. Right, only small mm -hmm. actors. Right, that mm -hmm. he's been able to take such a, a small bit and be remembered for that. I mean, that's just awesome. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think, and I told him this. You know, I, I think part of it is, you know, part of it is, you know, he's the first person, you know, the first character outside of the main cast that you see in the movie. It's a really memorable scene. It's a very funny scene, and I think, you know, that's part of it. But I think also, you know, why people remember him, why he's in Clerks Three, is just because of how good he is to the fans. Like he is just, mm -hmm. you know, one of the just kindest people ever uh, treats the fans really well. And, and they notice him. Like, I think just how he interacts with them. And I think that's, in my opinion, I think that's, that's part of why Kevin brought him back. Cause yeah. you know, he, he knew how he connected with fans. Well, that you know, really, he, yeah. Yeah. I mean, even with us on the podcast, you know, the opening music, that opening riff we have that, that guitar, Electric mm -hmm. guitar section that was written by Scott. Oh, yeah. was it? That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, it came off his album, which I feel totally embarrassed and ashamed that I forget the name of the album. But it was one he I brought out. I, I want to say a year or so ago, and he, he you know was kind enough. He just you know kind of gave us a copy. He said, "Look, use it," because the the way he looked at it was, I and mean, he talked about it on the show. He was like, you know, with this music, when you buy the CD or you buy it online, the digital copy, you have the right to use it. Like as in terms of like reuse it in, in a film yeah. or TV because his whole premise of the of the album itself were to, was to make tracks for productions, and so they're all instrumental tracks. And I was listening through and listening through, and I found that one. I'm just like, this is great. It's got a good feel to it, good vibe. It's like, yeah, a lot of people love that. And I, you know, I edited it up, and I felt weird taking it. It's like, would you be offended if I cut it up and and only use this part here, and then. 
because parts of it, like the very beginning of our show intro is like a later part of the song. And then like the middle part of the riff is like later on. So I kind of just rearranged the pieces and I felt so terrible, like cutting up someone's child and like repositioning them in a, in a better way, not a better way, but a different way. And he was like, dude, that's what it exists for. That's what we yeah, intended I'm to do. Sure. He had no issue with that. No, he, you know, that guy is all about the art and supporting the artists and, you know, and he's, he's such a multifaceted artist. Um, you know, I love when he, he acts in something and he says like, Oh, I did the score too. Like it's it just really, really cool. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm really honored to, you know, be able to work with them on stuff. It's just really cool. We had fun with the, um, in the Jesus B. Satan film. Um, I really wanted him to be involved in it. And, um, you know, we were, we were deep into the pandemic by that point. Um, and there just, there wasn't going to be a way that I was going to be able to drive up and film him and just and everything was uncertain. So I actually, you know, it's funny in the scene, he's like sitting on the toilet. And so <laughs> he's, he's, he's filming himself with his own camera and he has his, his phone in his pocket and I'm directing him through the phone. I'm not even seeing what he's saying. Like, I'm just listening to the lines. I'm like, okay, well, you know, emphasize that line, you know, do fo focus on that word and, and this and that. And it was just, it was so interesting and so creative. It was a lot of fun to do. And, and he killed it. I mean, he just really brought that character to, to life. I'm really excited to see um, his, his portrayal of uh, Don Smith, Kevin Smith's father in Shooting Clerks. And that movie, I know it's been put off and put off and put off. It's like they've been working on it since what, like 2014 or something like that. Yeah, something but like that, yeah. it's, it's going to be, I know it's, a long road, but it's going to be so much better because they added so much and edited so much more. It's going to look so good. I'm really excited about it. I think they're finally going to do it this year. I think it's finally going to be available at some point this year. And uh, of course our friend, uh, Danny black asked, can we get a Twitter link for Scott Schiaffo? I would love to check out his stuff. So everybody watching, I posted this in the comments, but if you're watching later on the YouTube, then you can just find Scott at Scott chef. He's a cool dude. He really is. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, no, Shooting Clerks was great. I saw a version of it, I want to say 2017, because they, they screened it in, in Jersey, and Kevin was there, and he was the tearing up. Men. Yeah, the comic book men, um, which yeah. I'm, I'm actually in that episode. Um, oh, you are? Sweet. You, which I didn't know about till like, this year. <laughs> oh, I, wow. I never had... Um, you know, the last couple of years, like I didn't have regular cable. Like I, I never knew mm -hmm. when it was on, you know? And so, you know, I just, I stumbled upon it on Amazon, like, Oh, I'm in this episode. And it's, it's the line of us outside the theater. Uh, and I'm, I believe I'm wearing this shirt. <laughs> so hard to miss. Yeah, I think I remember that now. I mean, there's like a crowd. Of, yeah. There was a couple of shirts in the crowd, but I think I, uh, later on after we had like connected on Facebook and I saw that episode, I was like, wait a minute. I know that. <laughs> There's a couple it, of people. It's, it's a know. brief moment. It's a brief moment. Right. Yeah, it's it's cool to to see different people in the you know in Kevin Smith community. Um, you know, get uh, you just see them and stuff. Like um, I got to rewatch yeah. reboot to see you know everybody I know in the background. You know, the Blunt Man and Chronic cosplayers. There's a bunch of those people, like from all the Kevin Smith groups and everything. And there's even in the comic book man. Um, there's a few. That popped up, like Stu. I forget his last name. Greek was it? Um, Stuart. Oh God, what was his last name? I can't remember. Feels so terrible. But I know him from like the Facebook groups, and I saw him on comment. But man, he was on two episodes. And he brought in like a, an old Ouija board, I think, once. Oh, really? And that was kind of cool. That show was so entertaining too, because it's like, yeah, they. It was. It was exaggerated. It was. It's reality TV. I mean, come on. If, if you you know watch that show in a regular comic book shop, like oh that's Spider Man, I'll give you twenty dollars. Okay, have a good day. You know, <laughs> yeah. you got to pump it up, and it was so entertaining. I love those guys. I'm a huge yeah. fan of the Steve Dave podcast too. So I mean, I listen to that every week. That's one of the ones I never miss. Yeah, yeah. So were you a, were you a comic book reader when you were young? You know, I was not. Uh, you know, I, okay, let me rephrase. I was, but not in the way you would think. I like I'm really in the comic book movies, but I'd say back in the day I, I wasn't really into superhero comics. I had though, I was a big, big collector. I had like every issue of Sonic the Hedgehog comics. 
Okay. Cool. With, with, uh, from Archie Comics. And just because I'm a big a big Sonic fan, I still am. And I, I just love the stories. I love the, the special issues. And that, that was my thing, which, you know, sounds sounded odd at the time. But, you know, now, you know, I created a site called Dork Daily. I just, I embrace my geekdom, so. So what, what is, what, uh, what is Dork Daily, for those that don't know, I mean, what is it really focused on? So Dork Daily, uh, it's, you know, it's a web page. It's, it's a blog. It's dorkdaily.com where we'll do uh, different articles on pop culture and, you know, especially like nerd uh, geek topics. And you were also a Facebook group. So that's a place mm -hmm. where honestly, I, I created the space to just be a place that people could escape from all the terrible things in the world that they could just come together, not argue about stuff and just talk about stuff they geek out about. And that, that was the purpose behind that. Um, and of course we have the YouTube channel with the, with different podcasts and, you know, occasionally we might do a sketch, but, um, it mainly is just sort of meant to be like a, a geektopia, dorktopia, if you will. That's cool. I, I really, we've really kind of just dipped our toe in the water in that area. Well, we've got our our group page, which we've been you know maintaining for a while, but um, uh, our new our new group that we've we, we I think we just hit three hundred members in that group. Yeah, um, awesome. But the same thing. Yeah, it, that idea of trying to you know, find our tribe and create a community of people that just like talking about the, you know, the different things that they're fans of, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah. I'm surprised how, how quick that group blew up. Yeah. No, I'm seeing more and more stuff from your group and it's great to see it grow. And I remember when it was kind of in its infancy. So, you know, just keep, keep at it, keep the content coming. Um, and, you know, I, and the, you know, the trick is like, if, if when I was starting out with the group, like, you know, posting, making posts that were questions and got more right. like comments that typically would get more attention for the group and put you're, you're competing with the algorithm constantly. So you right. know, you're, you're competing with, um, you know, everybody else in your group members, uh, newsfeed pretty much. Mm hmm. Yeah, I feel like we're we're learning how to play the game a little bit. That was the whole reason for us jumping into Twitter earlier in this year. And yeah, I, I feel like we're we're slowly kind of building momentum. So it's kind of exciting seeing people get excited about about the group and following the podcast and and everything else. So it's it's cool. I feel it's it's just one more way for us to engage. Yeah, it's awesome. I don't know if it's coming across, but there's somebody in my neighborhood doing fireworks, and I'm like, "Holy crap! What is that noise?" And it took me a minute. I'm like, "Oh, it's fireworks." Is that what that is? I, I sound like yeah. someone's scratching the wall. <laughs> right. It's right. it's coming. It's like around me. I don't know. It might be on multiple sides, but I'm just like, ah, oh, stop it! Oh what are man, they, what, are, what are they celebrating? I uh, Sunday. They're celebrating this podcast. Right. That's um, what it is. Yeah. I, yeah, they're they all just they're setting off fireworks because they all just joined the group. Um, That's what it is. Well, no, it's yeah. probably it's probably Labor Day. Pe you know, people still mix up Labor Day and July Fourth and Memorial Day, and I'm not sure how that happens. But right, it's uh, Cinco de September. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. zombies. There you yeah. go. Zombie. So I mean, <laughs> it could be. I mean, at first I heard a dog barking, and then I'm like, and I heard a couple of pops, and I'm like, is somebody shooting out there? And then I heard like a bunch of, not that like these big shootouts happen or anything, but still, it's like, you never know. You never know. What All if? Right. So, uh, Chris, what if? I know yeah. that you, I know that uh, you, you brought up, you just brought up what if, and I think that is, I heard that you are uh, up to date on, uh, on the what if show. I am, yes. What are you thinking about it? Well, now, Stephen, have, have you seen the fourth episode yet? Because I don't want to spoil anything. I haven't, but I'm not. I'm not huge on spoilers. I mean, I don't mind really because okay. I kind of well, read. I, I kind of read up on them anyway. I, I I won't spoil anything anyway, just because it's. Um, I I love it. I mean, I think it's a really really good show. Um, I didn't think I would get into something that was animated. Not that I'm against animation, but it just feels like. 
you know, oh, you have the live action and then you have the animations, you know, you think it's not as important, but I mean, they're, right. they're so true to the movies. Um, you know, the first episode was really good, but I felt like the, um, the beats were kind of too similar to the actual Captain America movie. You know, I felt like it, it wasn't different enough, um, but still enjoyable. The second one was phenomenal. Um, I just thought it was so cool to root for Thanos and see, uh, kind of see him as a good guy. And, yeah. uh, and really the timing of the timing of that episode with the anniversary of Chadwick Boseman's passing. I yeah. thought that was really timely. It was. And, and it's heartbreaking because he's, he's so good. Um, yeah. even, even doing, because you know, not every actor, not every screen actor is a great voice actor. It's, you know, it's a very different type of art, but I mean, he, he just really gave his all to that character. Um, and I'd heard that he, he was one of the first people to do voices for that show. Cause he wanted to get it in. I, you know, I imagine yeah. he maybe, maybe he knew he didn't have much time left. Um, but I think for fans of black Panther and of guardians of the galaxy, that was just such a perfect mashup, you know, such a perfect story. Um, the third one, did you watch the third episode, Stephen? Yeah, I've seen the third okay. one. Yeah. yeah. Um, that one was good. It was like, I, I like the second one better, but the, the third one was kind of cool. Like, you know, I love that we're starting back out at, uh, we, we begin at Iron Man 2, you know, with uh, mm -hmm. Tony and the donut. It's just, it, it was really cool to, I forgot how busy of a week Nick Fury had uh, back right. in uh, whatever it was, 2011. Um. You know, and this whole idea, like, well, what if what if the Avengers weren't there? Well, obviously, Loki would have taken over the world. I thought that was clever. Yeah, um, absolutely adored the last one. Was my favorite one with Doctor Strange. Um, it just it went so dark, and it was gutsy, but it it was definitely worth it. And that's I think that's what what's really great about the show is that you can do really dark stuff because it's it's not going to affect. You know, it's what if. You know, it's kind of yeah. like the the Simpsons um, Treehouse of Horror. You know, you can do anything and it's okay because everything's going to be fine by next time. Yeah, Got it was very it, it was very Groundhog Day like to me. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, he, he kept trying to to figure out different ways to solve the the problem. Again, trying not to be too spoilery, though we're not really afraid of spoilers not on this show. Not. But. Um, Steven, this means you gotta get yourself caught up. So we yeah, I need to watch it. Um, I know. Corey, or not Corey, sorry. I keep saying Corey because I'm used to Corey commenting. But Danny brings up a point that I didn't realize. There's a debate about Chadwick using the name Star Lord since this was a name given by Peter Quill's mom. What what thoughts on that? Well, my thoughts on that are, you know, any type, anytime there is a, a continuity issue or a glitch like that, what I always say is a wizard did it. Yeah, I mean that works, and it's believable, right? Because it's it. what, if, especially in what if, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's an old Simpsons joke. I don't know if you caught that. Right. Yeah, and anyway, Simpsons did it. Simpsons did it. Yeah, uh, Simpsons, yeah. Simpsons I mean, it's yeah. it's it would have been kind of interesting to have like a different name for him because yeah, I mean that's you know I I mm. forgot about that, but that's a good point. You know, um, it seems, but I, I think the episode description said that like you know he became a Star Lord. So maybe Star Lord is a you know maybe it's like a rank of some kind. You know maybe it's a rank within the the Ravagers. Yeah, or it uh, could be like a nickname, kind of like "Come on, Champ." Right. Or, yeah, maybe it's it, it has different meanings. Um, oh, and so good also to see Yondu again with my yeah. worker. Um, oh yeah. You know, and it's. So, oh, I I cried at the end of Guardians too. Um, it was so good, and it, it just I'm was such a great performance. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah such a meaningful you know arc for that character. But it's it sucked because we're like, oh, we're never going to see him again. And it, it's it's great that What If is going to allow us to you know see these characters again in another form. Um, mm -hmm. But I will will say about the Doctor Strange one. You know, I think that did better in animation than it would have live action. Um, yeah, you know, there, there's there's a moment um, that Chris maybe you'll know what I'm talking about, but just where he's Doctor Strange looks very different, um, hmm. and it's 
you know, he's he's talking to I can't think of her name, but his his the, the love of his life, and right. she's like freaked out, and it's and it's so like disturbing. But I'm like, this would this would feel fake if it was live action if they had CGI'd it or something. And I thought the animation style was perfect for this type of like nightmare type of story. Like it's it's definitely one of maybe the most disturbing Marvel moments in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Hmm. Yeah, I think her name was Christine. I think Christine, uh, right? Yeah, right. She, but he here he had literally given up his humanity, right? Uh, right. He'd yeah. become this this horrible figure of evil to bring her back, and then she sees him, and she's just terrified at what he'd become. It's it's a uh, heartbreaking moment, you know. Oh, yeah. It kind of you know harkens back to like Frankenstein. Uh, and and okay. all his all his monster movies and um, just chilling like I, I didn't I don't know I mean that's it's gonna be hard to top it was kind of like the second episode I thought that's gonna be hard to top and they really did with this one. I really feel like they've done a really great job of sequencing the episodes. I mean I know that you had mm-hmm. said that you had felt like the very first one with um, with Captain Carter was a little bit you know kind of light. But if they had if they had put that one later on, yeah, uh, it would have felt like a real letdown. But they they've really been kind of building, I think, every single week. Uh, but you're right; I don't know what they're going to find that's going to be able to beat uh, the last episode. Oh man! Yeah, yeah. No, it was definitely a great starter, and you know, you, when the whole concept. I mean, the the MCU is pretty sacred to to a lot of folks in a way, and I think changing it too much might have been a lot. And and so I think you're right in that it was able to gradually bring the audience in. I had this thought earlier. I was looking at some of my action figures and I had this Darth Vader figure. It made me think, hmm, Disney, Star Wars, Marvel, they're all the same now. And then what about like, would it be too much to add non Marvel comics characters into the what if type of stories? Like what if Darth Vader fought, I don't know, Wolverine or something like you know, those kinds of stories because they can do it. Like, why not? Well, that what I will tell you. Yeah. I will tell you that one of my, one of my favorite, what if comics that I remember from my childhood was, uh, what if Wolverine fought the incredible Hulk? Um, uh, which was a really, really cool comic book. I would, I would kill to see that one become, um, yes. Hulk versus Wolverine. Um, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I think that's probably the great thing about what if is that really literally nothing is off the table, right? It, it, yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I would say it would be great to see a crossover if it was done well, mm. you know, and um, I know there, I, I don't know what company, maybe it's Warner brothers. Um, they do a lot of crossovers like that with like Scooby-Doo or they, I know there was one, I didn't see it, but I, you know, I watched, um, I think it was Nostalgia Critic did a review of okay. the Batman versus the Ninja Turtles, which like sounds insane. Like, you know, how does that, yeah. how does that make sense? But he said it was really well done. So yeah, I think animation is the right place for that. You know, that kind yeah, of experimentation. There were some comics too. I know the, the the Boom Studios Power Ranger comics. They did the crossover with Ninja Turtles, and they actually had where the Ninja Turtles morph into Power Rangers. And I thought really? that was weird. Yeah, the, I mean, it's it wasn't animated, but it was you know, book form. But still, um, well, it's an the, Ninja, the Ninja Turtles were in Power Rangers. In yeah, I remember one that episode of Power Rangers in Space. The next mutation. It was like it was like a sort of like i don't want to call it like a backdoor pilot but it was sort of like the introduction of the um, next mutation series and then i realized what i watched that back like a, a, sometime last year in 2020 i watched the next mutation again and i'm just like oh no why why would they do this <laughs> what would they think it just because you could see the eye holes and the masks really and you could, I, yeah oh I, I remember watching it as a kid. I was obviously a big Power Ranger person. I and I watched um, Next Mutation. I remember enjoying it, but I I don't know how it would hold up today. I mean, I was um, yeah. I don't know how old I was. I was I was young. <laughs> I will tell you that going back and rewatching shows from your childhood, you'll you'll sometimes question your, you know, <laughs> why why did I like this show so much? I think there yeah. have been a couple of shows that have been like that. 
Um, Corey again, he's like, what if Scooby Doo showed up in clerks? <laughs> oh, they did. Technically, yeah, it was Jane Silent Bob's yes. first fact. Yes. Still, right. that was amazing. I really brought it, Bob. <laughs> like that was that's oh my gosh, that was a great Zoink show. Right. Zoink right. show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Danny pointed out another thing. We're talking about crossovers. Uh, check out Superpower Beatdown on YouTube. Those are from Bat in the Sun. They're the Bat in the Sun YouTube channel. Amazing, amazing stuff. You know what that reminds me of? Um, you know, we talked earlier about the early days of the internet. Do you guys happen to remember the what was it called? The the Ultimate Showdown of Ultimate Destiny, something like that. That sounds familiar. I, I vaguely remember that. It was like uh, 20 years ago, if not more, and it was a, basically a Flash movie. Like, what if everybody fought everybody? <laughs> it's, it's a really, it's a really catchy song. Oh man! So check it I out. Remember so, you, know, you can yeah. find it on YouTube. I gotta check that out for sure. Yeah, I need to find that. But there were some of my favorite, like those superpower beatdowns on, on that YouTube channel, were some of the greatest ones, and. All of the Power Ranger, like it's the Green Ranger, White Ranger versus, like, I think there was a Green, was it White Ranger versus Scorpion from Mortal Kombat? It might have been Green Ranger versus Scorpion. But every time that that Power Ranger was on that video, it was always Jason David Frank, the original actor. He came in and did the role for the Bat in the Sun videos, and I thought that was great. Oh, yeah, he, that's great. Yeah, he does the voiceover when they're in helmet, and then, like, he takes the helmet off, like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, like, he's in there, and that's... It makes it really great. And then they did this like, small film. He just, I don't know if it's a film or a short series that he did Legend of the of the White Dragon, which is, you know, a version, like a kind of the Power Rangers, like spinoff type type of story. Yeah, I, I've heard about some of these things. I got to check them out. So I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not sure like what's a series and what's a movie and what's like a promo. Cause then yeah. he was, uh, what Lord, Lord Draken or. Yeah. Um, was, but I think that, I think that was like a promotion or something. Yeah, that was like a promotion. I know that was a comic book character, the same like Boom Studio comics. Um, that that the Lord Draken was a what if kind of like a what if kind of thing, where what if you know Tommy Oliver, his character in Power Rangers, never turned good, yeah, and he just stayed evil, and so he has like he basically kills Rita and Lord Zed and like takes up their powers and like combines them and becomes this evil dark lord kind of thing but yeah that that's an interesting character and it yeah. kind of started in the comics and then they put it in a video game and then they did the little promo thing online and then they have an action figure of it so I mean, it's kind of cool and that guy he's been around like you think power rangers i think him automatically yeah yeah because he's been around it since what 90 was it 93 i think when they started that yeah 93 so when I started rushing home from school so I could watch it. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Kind of wish I was watching Clerks back then instead. <laughs> but who knows? I wasn't old enough to appreciate that that movie. Or yeah, any of neither, neither was I. Oh gosh. I knew what it was. My first actual exposure to Clerks or anything was the animated series. Oh, nice. On ABC because it aired two episodes on ABC and then they canceled it. And so and you just have to, happen to catch it when it was on? Yeah, I saw the promos building up for it. It's a Clerks, the cartoon or whatever. I'm like, ooh, this is kind of fun. It's a cartoon. I like going to stores sometimes. I'm a kid. Like, they're in a store. It's a cartoon. <laughs> Let's watch it. And then their first episode was a flashback episode because they aired it out of order. And so it's like, yeah. wait, well, this doesn't make any sense. And then I saw bar parts of the Clerks movie, and I was like, this isn't like the cartoon at all. It's not even in color. And then, you know, as I got older, I realized, like, oh, Clerks is actually good. Right, right, right. But, well, I, I love the series. Like, if you watch the whole series, it's it's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. It really is. And I've heard, I've heard rumor that they're going to try to bring it back. Well, so, you know, the Clerks 3 concept, you know, of Randall making Clerks, basically, that was originally mm -hmm. going to be an animated movie based on the series. Okay, maybe that's maybe that's what I was thinking of then, because I heard some talk about reviving it or bringing it back, and that was before Clerks Three was officially going to happen. Yeah, well, I think he's he's always talked about bringing the show back in some way, but mm. I want to say it was about maybe fifteen years ago. Um, I think maybe even before Clerks Two, they were talking okay. about doing a doing an animated movie of the Clerks cartoon called Clerks Sellout, and it was going to be about Randall and Dante making a movie about Quick Stop. 
And so, wow. he kinda, you know, and it's, it's just so interesting. He used that idea later, but I remember it was, um, it, I, I had seen stuff online. They had like a preview page and that was the plot. And, um, okay. Kevin had talked about it a couple of times. He described it like, you know, a snake eating a snake kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Now that you said sneaking snake, I remember him talking about that. Now it's been a while though. Yeah. It was, wow. it was a while ago, like 10, 15 mm. years at least. It's crazy. And it's just, just like the movie within the movie. He, he kind of sp- people get mad at Kevin Smith because he's like, "Here, let me tell you, ninety five percent of the movie I'm making right now." And they're like, "Shut up! Let us be surprised by some." <laughs> but he really doesn't really reveal that much no, because no, not he, really. did, he did tell us the name of the movie within the movie called Inconvenience, which was the original working title for Clerks. Right. And I, yeah. I thought that was really cool. It's one of those nerdy moments that nobody else is going to care about. I'm like, ooh, yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, he, that to me is not a spoiler. You know, he, he no, really not, hasn't really. said much. Um, you know, I, yeah, he, he's, people overreact as, as really. they do. They really do. They're like, how dare you? There's like the whole uh, Masters of the Universe thing, oh which I still, I've still not seen, uh, but I want to get on. And that's the next thing I need to get on to watch is, is the Masters of the Universe. But, Everybody's going jumping on him for it. They're like, "Oh, he ruined his career." Now he's not even. Ta- I saw this one YouTube video of like this hater like going on Kevin Smith, like, "Oh yeah, he's not even responding to fans anymore about it because he's embarrassed." I'm like, "Dude, he's making a movie, right? What do you want I, him to do?" Like, and he doesn't. He doesn't have an obligation to react to fans. No, like you no. know, he doesn't. <laughs> um, and you know what gets me, and it, it's not even just you know strictly with Kevin Smith, obviously, but. This whole idea, you know, I saw somebody post, oh, what Kevin did to Masters of the Universe ruined my childhood. Like, no, it didn't. You know, the the original Masters of the Universe cartoon is still out there. Like, it did not right. erase, you know, why do we have to have the same thing again and again and again and again? Now, I'm, I'm not like a huge fan. I haven't watched the new series, but it sounds like it went in a slightly different direction. And, you know, why Why is that a bad thing? Well, you and know? I will tell you, it, I've, I've watched it, and uh, I actually really enjoyed it. You know, uh, they, did a, they did a great job. And you end up learning about characters that, that usually end up kind of hanging, hanging out in the background. Uh, it, it's great. But sometimes people have their headcanon, right? They've, mm. already, they've already made up what the movie is going to be like in their own minds mm-hmm. and then they can't accept anything else. And uh, I think sometimes people have to kind of let that go. Mm-hmm. Right. We're, we're, we're seeing somebody else's vision, you know, and uh, I, I think sometimes that ruins people. They, they just can't sit back and enjoy a good show. Yeah. yeah. And they're, they're actually doing Netflix is coming out with another He-Man cartoon, like That's... another series of like a reboot apparently of, of, he-Man and the Masters of the Universe. It's not connected to the Kevin Smith show. It's separate. And oh, I'm just I like, heard that. Yeah, I was like, see, you 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 complained about this and said it was garbage, but now you have your He-Man. So like, shut up. <laughs> like, I don't know. But yeah, apparently it's come. It's not out yet. It's coming up either this year or early next year. I don't know exactly, but, but yeah, I gotta watch them. I haven't I haven't seen He-Man. I didn't really grow up with He Man. Obviously, I'm you know I wasn't born when He Man was a thing, but I remember playing with the little He Man action figures. Didn't know what, what they were really. I just knew they had these crazy arms, and you could pop them off, and they and like ha ha ha, I'd switch out the arms. And stuff. <laughs> but yeah. Well, Chris, we want to thank you for for coming and just kind of sharing about your projects and everything. Uh, you seem to hustle a lot. <laughs> yeah, I think that's cool. I, I, it's really neat just being able to to follow you in all of your uh, you know areas in social media and uh, uh, you know being in in groups that you're a part of. Uh, I think that it's it's just kind of neat to to see what you're doing. I know we're gonna look forward to seeing this new podcast with yeah. uh, with Brian Dunkelman starting up here soon. So when does that start up again? We are planning to launch on Wednesday. On so, Wednesday. Okay, well, Wednesday, yeah. Sure. So check it out. YouTube.com slash Dork Daily. And, and thank you for the kind words. It's it's really a pleasure uh, to talk to you guys. Honor to be here. 
Um, and you guys are doing awesome stuff. So, you know, just keep putting good out into the world. And thank you, Danny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love awesome. it. It's just compliment central. I dig Absolutely. it. Yeah. That's what we you love know, about live. It really is. It re which is what yeah. we love about live. I, we, we really are focused primarily on the positive stuff. There's enough negativity in the world. Act, we really do want to. We there, we want to focus on the stuff that we really love. Yeah, yeah. And if and if I do have a complaint about something, we don't like go. How dare him? Now let me spend fourteen hours talking about why he's a bad person. No, right. I mean you kind of like say, "Oh, I hate that," and then you get over it and then move on. There's there's stuff out there. There's so much content to enjoy. Yeah, content for everybody. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys. Well, yeah. you have a great night. It's it's been a pleasure. So yeah, you uh, too. We'll we'll love to come back again. If if you need a filler, let me know. Absolutely, absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. We're live at all location. We go to yeah. <laughs> you can be a weather guy or no, we're not going to be a news show. Sorry, I say <laughs> weird <laughs> random things at the end of the show. Is that's kind of like a, a I don't I don't it's do a, it on purpose. It just happens. It's it's okay. Just make sure people are paying attention, right? It's, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Whatever it works. All right. Well. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Take uh, take it easy, and hopefully we do get to get you on here again. It sounds great, guys. Have a great night. All right. You too. Sure. Yeah. Thanks. Bye bye. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, I feel like um, yeah, that's one of the great things about interviews is, you know, you you kind of walk into an interview sometimes thinking that you know what you're going to talk about, and then other things come out that you didn't notice or you, you weren't aware of. And so that's great. I feel like I really got to know, uh, you know, uh, Chris a little bit better. So. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we've, we've been friends on Facebook for a while and it's funny, like the same with you and I, like we didn't talk, like speak to each other until this podcast. Yeah. Um, which is weird to think about still, but it is what it is, I guess. Yeah. And even when we started speaking, we still kept the camera off. How hilarious! Yeah, at first, that? yeah, yeah. We didn't have the camera on until I think one week or two weeks before Scott Schiaffo was on. So, like when Scott came on, we it was like, "Wow, okay, this is still new to us." But, uh, but yeah, and it's about that time I haven't forgotten. Sometimes I forget to do this, and you have to remind me. And I'm like, "Oh yeah, that's right, I knew that." But. Um, you can follow, of course, this show is brought to you by Mark Guggenheim, who's a great friend and a wonderful guest. Really look forward to having him back on. He's got a lot of projects he's working on as well. Um, looking forward to that Green Lantern series on HBO Max. Uh, can't wait for that. Absolutely. You can follow him at M. Guggenheim. You can follow our podcast page at Pod and Hard Place. And then you can follow Chris at CJ Kirk. 1979 and myself at Stephen Colton and we are growing on Twitter as well. I think we're, and I'm not going to brag like we have 14 followers or whatever, <laughs> but like, I think we're close to 700 or five. We're, or we're getting like close. That. Yeah. We're and close. It, like a month ago we had about 200 maybe. And so it's, it's really blowing up with the combination between Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. I was almost going to say MySpace, but, um, we're not back in 1999 or whatever. No, my space wasn't around back then. What am I talking about? Um, we don't have all that, but like it, it's co combining all these things with the group and, and then cross promoting with the links and this and that. It's just and the community. There's people every day on our Facebook group, uh, the between a pot and a hard place Facebook group that is just like, who is this? I've never heard of this guy. This is like John Smith or what? I try to come up with a creative name. I come out with John Smith. Um, but I, I, I don't, I see these people and I don't know who they are. I'm like, they must've just joined. This is amazing. Like there's, they're popping up. Like I like Batman. Really? Me too. Yeah. See, look, I bought this. And then everybody's like having a good time. So, and I hope at least a couple of them are watching right now. Which yeah. they probably are. I mean, I, I've been really working on trying to, to really build the community of people that, that I want to talk to and that I think might have an interest in the show. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's all about trying to find your tribe. And, uh, and I take that pretty seriously. Plus it's fun. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Um, Danny again says, you know, you, you got to hit some conventions. You guys would explode. I mean, I would, I had, I did one little, I didn't do it, but I went to it a little local comic con back in, 
I want to say it was May, I think. And it was fun. We saw a droid running around. I think it was an R2 unit. He was different colors, so I don't want to say it's R2-D2 because it clearly was supposed to be another one. But I don't know a huge about Star Wars or, or droids specifically. Although there's a lot of people out there like, you idiot, that was R5-1425. You <laughs> idiot. And I, okay. Um, but it was really cool because he was remote controlled. His head turned. He's like, beep, boop, boop, And he did all the sounds, and it was it was awesome. And you had Boba Fett there. You had some stormtroopers. It was a fun time. Yeah, um, I went to uh, I went to Ga um, to uh, Gallifrey One in LA um, a couple years ago. That was the Doctor Who con. Okay, and, uh, and that was a blast. Really, really enjoyed it. Kind of a smaller con, mm -hmm. um, you know. But that was that was a lot of fun. I I don't I don't live that far away from San Diego. Um, I've always wanted to go to the the SD Comic Con. Oh gosh. Uh, but that thing is huge. San Diego, yes. Yeah. I would love to go to that one at least once. like, Or yeah. even drive past it like, ah, and then go back or something. Like, but I don't, oh, yeah. gosh. The, yeah, the, the tickets for that are just insane. Yeah. I need to, you know, sell a kidney or something. Yeah, I'm thinking about selling a toe to, to get out to California this year. Um, I don't know if anybody wants to buy my toe, but if you are, I'll I'll put it up on eBay uh, starting bid at three hundred dollars. You can have any pick of any toes. All my toes are in pretty decent shape, I think. Um, that we're losing subscribers probably now. Right, um, right. Yeah, okay. I, I don't I don't know who uh, is in desperate need of a toe. But I mean, it would be good for a Halloween setup. You know, human right. toe on the porch, right. keep kids away from so you can eat all the candy yourself. Um, you know, it's a good time for it. I don't want to lose my toe, but if I can go to California free, then I'll give a toe. Right. I hope it doesn't come to that though, Stephen. Or I could just save money out of my paycheck every week. That would be probably better. Probably. Probably. Better. Oh gosh. All right. Well, this has been a fun episode. It's been I, great. It's been you know, great. I can't wait for next week. We don't have anything specific on the on the docket for next week. We're just probably going to talk about. We've had a guest the last couple of weeks, so we're probably going to get back to our nor normal discussions about, you know, what if, about Titans, which the last episode of Titans, that I love that sign, the Bat, um, the Batman sign, the um, Gotham welcome sign. To, welcome to Gotham. Now, what was it? Did, did it say, like, now go the fuck home? That's exactly what it said. Yeah. Yes. I love that. I was like, yes. I don't know. The whole episode after that, I'm like, <laughs> just because of that sign, I don't People, I, people I in the really, community, though, I don't I know. know. They seem to be really negative about Titans. Yeah, it's and just I'm I'm loving it. I think I it's love, fantastic because I love Batman. Yeah, I love Batman. He's like the. Let's see. There we go. We got to do something here before we. Oh gosh, I'm gonna hurt myself here. But I, it's like you know, the little angel and demon thing here. It's like, yes, Titan sucks. It's terrible. No. It's good. You know, I don't know. It's what it feels like when you go into these Titans groups and, and these discussions because everybody's like, it's too much Batman, too much Batman. I'm like, you know, too much watching if you don't like Batman. You know, you don't have to watch it. I mean, is it is it very Bat-centric? Of course it is. But yeah. I think, they're, I think they're really building up. You, you can't have Red Hood without Batman and without Dick Grayson without without that part of it um i i do know that once we really firmly establish you know red hood and scarecrow and and have all that background set up they're mm -hmm. going to be able to integrate the other characters into it more right we know, so. we, we know that that uh that raven is coming back here soon yes and donna troy is supposed to be resurrected mm -hmm. so Nazareth's pit. yeah it's going to happen yeah, I'm excited. I've also been watching Heels. I know. I wish we would have talked about this a little bit earlier so we could have like talked about the show itself. But that's a good show. If anybody out there hasn't watched it and you, and you like Stephen Amell from Arrow or from anything else he's been in and you kind of like wrestling and drama, check it out. It's I think it, it comes on Stars. They release one episode a week, just like they do with a lot of shows now because they want you to pay for their dang subscriptions, but um, which is fine. But um, it's a great show. It really is. I, I believe you could also find it on Hulu. I think I read that somewhere. 
um, the, the Hulu premium or whatever, like the, the more expensive plan. It's, it's a great show. Their fourth episode just dropped today and I watched okay. it this morning before I went to work. And that's what I do every Sunday before work. I watch heels and go to work and I'm just like, Oh, that was so good. So it's, so it really is that good. I like it. I mean, it's, I like Stephen Amell as an actor. I like, you know, his characters and, and that he plays in everything. And I, I'm a big wrestling fan or at least used to be. So like, and I love drama. So like combine all those things together. And it's just, it's a completely different character than arrow. And, you know, of course it's wrestling and it shows such, it's such a good commentary on like maybe what the life of like a wrestling personality would be in a small town in Georgia. So yeah. it's like the South, it's kind of where wrestling grew and, and came from and like not came from, but where it was big and, you know, back in the seventies, eighties, nineties and all that. And uh, it's just a really good show. All right. Well, I need to get caught up. Yeah. It's, it's not bad. I love how I go. It's amazing. It's great. It's pretty good. It's not bad. I'm like talking myself down. I'm like, it sucks. No, it's, <laughs> it, it really is good. But yeah, I think that's our show for tonight. Unless we forgot anything. I, we got the Twitters in there. We got the, we got to put the YouTube out there, um, which I never have prepared. Um, let me go there real quick and grab that link because that's growing as well. I know, you know, we've we've jumped, no, we jumped slower on on YouTube. We're we're slower to catch up with YouTube as far as like the amount of people, of uh, subscribers. But I'm not really, I, I'm. I was gonna say I'm not really counting subscribers. I am, but I don't really care if we have ten or ten million. Honestly, but it's nice last, to see it grow. Yeah, but, even in the last week though, we had seen a pretty big bump in subscribers. Yeah. We really have, and like I'd like to see the subscriber base base grow, but if it doesn't, if we never get one more subscriber, I'll be fine with that. Because well, it's really just get well, I won't be, but I mean, I'm not going to be angry or upset or like our lives are over, we'll never be. Oh no, yeah. I really think if we keep we keep doing what we're doing, and we're going to see growth there. Oh, absolutely. And this um. This comment here is for those of you watching live because it's a link. So in the, in the – well, you don't have to be watching live. If you watch the replay on Facebook, you can go to this link as well. But on the YouTube version, don't try to click your screens. You might break your, your screens there. <laughs> um, that's just how YouTube links come out, and I don't, I don't know. Um, but check us out. Follow us. Subscribe to us. Thumbs up and thumbs down if you hate it. But even if you do, create a second account and thumbs up it. Um, because the videos are, you know, we're gonna be on TV one day, folks. We're gonna have a TV. Imagine that us having a talk show on actual television. That would be awesome. It would be. Yeah. It would be. Or maybe we can talk to Sirius XM and uh, see if they want a nerdy podcast, and we could get a bunch of us together and do like the big Sirius XM nerd. Right. I mean, we're available. We're available. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I have to work tomorrow, but after that, I'm free for two days. No, like I would still keep my job if that happened. Um, all right, well, it's been fun. I'm going to stop rambling now because I do this all the time, and I'm going to try to keep myself from doing that so much this week. Yeah, no worries. No worries. Well, this was fun. Have a have a good night, and I'll look forward to yeah. next week. You too. All right. All right. Take it okay. easy. See ya.